السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله على نعمة العلم فإن العلم من أجل القربات إلى الله عز وجل الحمد لله for the knowledge that Allah سبحانه وتعالى he provided for us this knowledge that Allah عز وجل he gave it to us and the Prophet محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم with his sunnah it is the best thing that we can get closer to Allah عز وجل so today, inshallah, we're going to, uh, yesterday, since we talked about the uh, sins and how the sins are affecting our life, and uh, we mentioned that the devil, they are focusing in big sins and the small sins. So today we'll talk about the big sins, what are the big sins which we can avoid them, and the devil acts, how the sins happen. Um, what is the remaining effect of the sins when we do it as person by person and how it is reflected to the community and how it also reflects on ourselves as well. And what are the ways to keep ourselves away from the sins? So let us start, Bismillah. So we'll start with the big sins. The most important thing, as you know, is the shirk. Shirk, subhanAllah, in the judgment day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive us for this. So shirk, it is to associate with Allah Azza wa Jal. This is one of the biggest sins. However you will do from the salah and everything, since you did the shirk, as if you took yourself out of the, out of the road, you are not there included anymore leaving the prayers, delaying it purposely also as well sometimes with no reason till the time comes out from it. Some people, they do killing. It's okay for them to do killing. And why do they do killing? Because the iman, the heart is already dead. Some people, they do stop the zakah. Like, why do I have to spend my money for poor people? Which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us. And the zakah is nothing. You just, there is zakat al-mal. From one year to one year, it's just a very small amount from the amount that he can keep it, subhanAllah. And it gives barakah for his money. Because the people who doesn't understand about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, how he balance the, the world, the people, they understand it in the wrong way. Why should I give my money for somebody else? And if you do something like that, some people, they look at you as um, maybe you lost your mind or something like that. They will look at you in a very different way. Some people, they do break the fast in Ramadan for no reason. This is one of the big sins. Some people, they have the capability to go to the Hajj and maybe they are near to the place even, but they don't go. This is also one of the big sins. To treat parents badly. Some people, they do um, talk about their parents or they treat their parents in a bad way. Um, some acts that you cannot even imagine about the human. And sometimes we can do the same mistakes. So we need to be careful about treating the parents because it is one of the big sins. Cut off the family relationship. Sometimes we say, we don't wanna to talk to them because they are bad people or something like that. No, Allah Azza wa Jal, he ordered us to go and talk to them. However, if they are bad, still keep relation with everyone. Don't cut the relationship with the families. The zina, the forbidden relationship. Some people, it is okay for them to have the zina. It's okay to have the girlfriend and uh, boyfriend thing is going on. Let us go out, it's not a problem. And he, they can call themselves husband and wife. They are not officially husband and wife, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from these kind of things. And we have the riba, the extra money. For example, some of them, they will ask, what is riba? Riba, for, you went to somebody and you lent a money. For example, let us say 1,000. And he will tell you this person, if you're going to take 1,000, then you have to bring it back after one month since you are lending it. So you have to give me 2,000 instead of 1,000. So the person you took from the person 1,000 and you are replying 2,000 extra, double. Why this is forbidden as a riba, as to take an extra uh, amount? Extra amount, it will make a problem in, in, uh, in the world. 
For example, this person, he's already poor, he doesn't have. So you will ask him or you will make him lend more money from somebody else. So he will be still in need or he will give you everything. You will, you will, uh, you will put him in a situation that you will harm this person to give you the money. And the person who is already doing this business to give people money, he's getting rich. And the other people, they are getting more poor. In Islam, this is not allowed. Even, if, for example, in business, some people, um, if they give them the money, they say, okay, give us back later on with an extra. So what it will happen in the market, the in, the, in the market, inflation will happen. So the person who's going to sell the bread, instead of selling the bread in two dirham, they're going to sell the bread in 10 dirham. So even the people who's going to buy the bread, some people, they will not be even capable to buy the bread. So this is what we are talking about, the riba, the effect in the community. And there is something else is called liwat. Some people, they do um, a kind of a relationship between female and male, uh, female and female, sorry, and uh, male with male, subhanAllah. Uh, and this is where Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam, he came down in Qawm Lut and he, he destroyed the village, subhanAllah. And still we can see nowadays people, they are presenting these kind of ideas, even in the games which the, the small children that they are playing nowadays, they are presenting again these kind of ideas or in the westernized school. And it is coming here in the Islamic country also that you can see it in front of you that, that even the kind of the fashion, be careful on the fashion, on the clothes, because somehow it is leaning to side of the male they look like a female and the female, she looks like a male. So we need to be very careful in this matter. Eating orphans money, because some people, they left, subhanAllah, their children, the father died and so on. And they have their, um, uh, the money that is left for those ch children. So the elders, they're the one who's keeping the money. So what they do, they eat the orphan money. They're not giving it to them when they grow up, when they are in a, in a stage which they can be, they can depend on themselves. They are taking their money from them. Lying, lying it is one of the big sins. Maybe you say there is a white lie, there is a gray lie, there is, I don't know which color of lying, but there is no colors of lying. Lie is a lie and it is a big sin. And also to have a pride in yourself, like you are so pride in front of the people. This is also one of the sins because who, who told you that you're better than anyone else? Nobody's better than anyone else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he created us, all of us equal as one. And even when we stand for the salah, we stand only in one line. So we don't, we shall not show this kind of pride in ourselves to the others. Like you don't know who I am. You don't know what do I have. I am this or that, or even a teacher, even a teacher shall not have that kind of attitude to the people. Everybody has to lower their wings down. Taking people's rights as a vulm, as injustice, you take people's rights, like now what is happening in, uh, in the world, people they're entering into their houses and they're asking them, go out from the house, this is not your property. So people, they live outside the houses, which this house is belong to them or this land, it belongs to them. And subhanAllah, they are kicked out from their lands with injustice and treated badly by the others, thinking that they are the winners. Wallahi, they are not the winners. Allah Azza wa Jal, he will uh, give, inshallah, victory to Islam and the people who has patience in it. And cheating, there is something called rashwa. Rashwa, for example, if I go to somewhere and I know this thing will not happen or it will not pass. For example, I want uh, to pass the car and I know my car, it will fail. So what I do, I tip the person, I tip the person to make my car uh, to be approved. Tipping, so tipping, this is called rashwa and this is not allowed also. This is one of the big sins. Arriya, arriya also. Uh, subhanallah and yani showing off there is backbiting and also there is another thing which it is coming back in our community nowadays because people they don't know about the sunnah and a uh, little bit they are far from Allah Azza wa and the sunnah to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make the, the dresses long whether female or male for example now you will say okay what about the, the female okay somebody wrote in the chat yes uh, the men nowadays, they wear kandura very long, and uh, we have no clue from where it came from, subhanAllah. Now you can see it, even it, it goes longer till his, the shoe, yeah, and the lower shoe, which uh, 
يعني as sunnah uh, that he shall make it a little bit up that when he walks he doesn't take the يعني he, when he walks he doesn't clean the floor with it and the female is she's different she shall not suppose she's not supposed to show her legs right nowadays as you can see the female they became male wearing the short abayas and showing the legs or even the inner leggings it comes uh, shorter or يعني, subhanallah like to show uh, how the the shoe looks like or what she's wearing on her leg يعني, subhanallah يعني, these kind of acts it is not as per the sunnah so here we have um, an incident that it happened whoever drags his clothes out of pride god azza wa jal he will not look at him in the judgment day okay so um salama she said how do they make women yani how the woman yani she will walk and she, her feet will show okay she, how she shall make her tail how long she, she shall make it so she asked about it so he said subhanallah she can relax it as you know uh, when you look at your hand this much as your hand you can make it longer than that and then she said maybe it, it it can show when she walks something from her leg it can show see how the women they were caring about following the quran because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in uh, in his uh, one of the ayat that the woman when she walks she shall not strike her leg to show what is she's hiding under it so she she was asking what if for example if she lifts her tail a little bit and then it could show then he said she goes with the arms length and no adding more than that even for the wedding now they will ask what about the wedding the lady if she's wearing a dress or something like that then she can go with an arm not more than that subhanallah yes sister aisha barakallahu fiki the lady is the opposite she makes it um yani she shall make it longer yes and but not that much long there is a limit for it and also the minute Now the devil acts. Don't act like the way how the devil, the way that they act. Even in those days, they used to care not to act in the same way of the devil acts, like eating and drinking from the left hand. And subhanAllah, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, don't be from the lifted hand. And the people who are giving their books with the lifted hand, they are the losers. So subhanAllah, we try our best to have the, uh, the right hand within Allah ta'ala. Uh, some people they are taking and giving by left hand. Um, some of them they have the act of walking with one shoe. This is the act of the devil. And also to travel alone, to be alone, to isolate yourself. This is the devil act. And uh, to fast, uh, to be fast in your steps and everything that your everything that you need to do. Everything immediately, 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 very fast. So this is also that's why they say uh, be humble, walk slowly. Uh, give time or balance the same things in between. Yes, this is something else forced alone, but I mean the people who are, uh, they don't like to be with anyone, like they like the loneliness. They have this thing inside them. All right. Uh, to exit uh, the visa and these kind of things, this is something else. But we are talking about the people who they like traveling alone, time by time and uh, being alone, isolating themselves. I don't want to meet anyone. I don't want to mingle with anyone. SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to mix with the people and to be with them. And even mixing with the people, it is healing. You, your heart is healing, uh, um, you know, at least once a week, even twice a month, if you don't have time at all with the people who they're busy going to work and so on. So this is one of the things which we shall remind ourselves, SubhanAllah. Okay, uh, how the sins happen when our hearts are attached to something else than Allah Azza wa Jal? Usually this is what it happens. Um, most of the girls, subhanAllah, if they want to become, in, if they enter to Islam, usually they are attached with something made them to become a Muslim. So when that thing which they, are, they were attached to, it disappears one, one day, if it goes, it's not there anymore, suddenly you will see them, they uh, they will start committing a sin. She will remove her hijab. Why? Because she has an anger in her heart. It didn't happen what she wished. And she became a Muslim for that reason. This is many times it's happening. So we need to be careful in, this, in these kinds of angles. Even the Muslims by themselves, if they're attached to the dunya, like loving the sun too much or loving a human too much uh, in, in, in life, 
more than Allah Azza wa Jal and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companion and his parents, loving the dunya so much or loving something extra than Allah Azza wa Jal, you will always, we will be harmed and the sense easily can, can uh, attack the heart and make you com commit the sin without even you, you don't mean to do it because the brain, it is not there. So you will try to harm yourself as much as you can just because that feeling it is not there or you want to show the other side that i'm hurted and i want you to know that i'm hurted so i will start doing this and this and this nobody cares it's only your i mean it is your deeds it is your book and this is and you need to care what you're going to add in your book subhanallah and to obey the anger sometimes if you are so angry as we said yesterday you need to say if you're angry you need to say a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim or go and have wudu. Try to distract yourself. Because if you will obey your anger, it will end very badly. And obeying the anger is like obey, obeying the, the devil. Because the devil, he has this kind of character where he will try to destroy everything. And many marriages has been destroyed just because of anger, just because of one word, just because the person wants to show, like, you don't know me if I get mad, I can destroy everything. I can destroy this, I can kill. Even they can kill, they can even, they can even raise their hands to their parents when they are angry. So we need really to be careful not to obey our, our, obey our anger. And also not to obey our desires because obeying our desires, sometimes we will say, oh, I, I feel so great. I feel like I, I follow my heart. You follow your heart, but what type of following, yani what type of desires that you have it inside your heart? So if it is against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala law, of course, it is very easy to fall into a sin. Today, it's okay to meet with a person. Tomorrow it's okay like to touch the hand. Tomorrow after tomorrow it's okay to remove the hijab in front of the person. And little by little, and then we can say like goodbye. There is no even limits because the devil already over attack. And then khalas, you will start thinking in different way. You will start evaluating things in different way. When even how many girls, when they wanted to get married later on, they couldn't go back again or it didn't happen or they already, I mean, they were in lust, subhanAllah. Um, and also following the, obeying the desires can be in many ways, but in overall, this is the easiest thing. The relationship is the more easier to be attacked or even to look at the sins, to look at the sins or to listen to a music. It's very easy just to obey, okay, one time, second time, third time, okay, no problem. And then suddenly you will see yourself, you are in the sins. What is the effect in the community when everybody does the same sin? Everybody's listening to music, everybody's committing a sin, having a, a forbidden relationship. What it will happen in the community? Diseases. Diseases will start to spread in that area, like a warning from Allah Azza wa Jal. And subhanAllah, even sometimes in this area, we will not find barakah in this area, in this community. Little rain you will, you will find. So we need to do a lot of istighfar. When we see something like that, we need to revise ourselves. Yes, the sister, she said, shaitan was a curse due to his pride and feeling of jealousy to Adam. As again, it is the first ever sin. So it pro proves that the emotion heart, um, uh, emotion hurt us when it is too much. Naam, barakallahu fiki. So the sister, she's saying not to follow the shaitan because that was the first thing that it happened. And we will come to it. There is a very important uh, uh, message that you give just now. We'll come to it later, inshallah, and we'll try to emphasize it. So little rain, sometimes when we see little rain, little risk that we get, or sometimes even the place too much expensive, everything's expensive. You know, even the Sahaba those days, they had this kind of knowledge. They say, uh, if you see everything like too much, um, the, the money that you spend it, there is no barakah. Or for example, there is a, uh, we need to buy things in a very expensive way. Then they're saying this is because of our sins and we need to lower it. To do istighfar, by istighfar, things will go lower, subhanAllah, they had this kind of knowledge. So as we said, there is no barakah in the rizq, 
Whatever you have it in your hand, you feel it is evaporated. Whatever you work hard, you feel there is nothing. You don't do anything with the money that you get, subhanAllah, because of the sense. And uh, suddenly we see people, they have hate between each other. She hates her, but she doesn't know her. There is hate. There is something in the, in the air that's going on. The fights will, will start appearing for no reason. So this is the sense which it is affecting the community because people, they're committing a sin and they are, they are, nobody's stopping the other not to do the sin. Before, they used to stop, this is haram, this is not allowed, and this and this. And so everybody's like, they have a shame in themselves or there is a distance or people, they will, they will listen to your advice not to do it, subhanAllah. Al-amr bil ma'roof wa nahi anil munkar. But nowadays, like everything is allowed. And uh, as you can see, so it's very easy. Now, even you cannot even control your children because of everybody's doing it. So you cannot even close the eyes of the children. What are you going to do? But subhanAllah, even the remaining of the effect is not only on the community, it has an effect. It has also effect on the person. The person by himself, he will feel there is a gap between him and Allah Azza wa Jalla. There is a huge gap. And there is a gap between the people who's doing khair, the people who are the, the good followers of Allah Azza wa Jalla. You, don't, you feel there is a huge gap between you and them because the shaitan, he will make you away from anything that it has khair because you don't want to listen to anybody to give you advice because you know in the bottom of your heart, if somebody advise you, it will annoy you, it will annoy you and it will, uh, because you don't want to know or you don't want anybody to advise you to stop doing it because you want to do it. So we'll start running away from those people who will advise you. So you will have the gap also as well. And you will try to put Allah Azza wa on your back. Never, ever, anybody commit a sin and he knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching him. Wallahi, he cannot commit a sin unless he put Allah Azza wa on his back. He, he will try to make his brain thinking that Allah is not watching him, that he can commit the sin. But if Allah is in front of his eyes and he knows he's watching him, he will never dare to do that. So having the gap, the human, he's the one who's creating that. And the devil, he's emphasizing more to encourage you. Yes, 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 do it. It's a very good feeling, okay? Yes, uh, Sister Fatima, she said uh, it's pride that causes anger. And whenever he wants يعني, to progress in his life, this person, the sinner, he cannot. You feel like he's not doing anything. He doesn't have, he doesn't feel anything. There is no test in life, subhanAllah. And everything is getting difficult for this person. And sometimes some people, they will say, how come we see some people, they are committing a sin and eating people's right and their, their life is smooth. You don't know the secret. They will show you that everything is smooth, but they know in their life, they're struggling. Maybe it will lead them to have drugs. How many actors that you have heard that they did, they commit a suicide and they have all the monies, they have millions and millions and they have the houses, they have everything that they can enjoy. Why do they have drugs? Why do they drag themselves to kill themselves? Nobody is happy if you are away from Allah Azza wa Jalla. They find darkness in their heart. They don't find peace. That's why they will try to show that we're enjoying, enjoying, trying to travel, try to do this, but there is nothing, there is no taste. It's just a smile on the face, but the heart is empty. And subhanAllah, it doesn't give barakah in your life. And it takes away your shyness. Yani for the first time, maybe the girl, she's shy. I cannot, I cannot look at the guy. I cannot do this. And then by little by little, look at me. And they will start smiling. And then little bit like touching the hands. Okay, only this is touching the hands. And little by little, it will go more further. So the shyness is removed little by little. I can just give this example because it's the closest as a human, subhanAllah. And uh, even the music, subhanAllah, if you listen to the music, you are obsessed with listening to music, by time, you will notice that it removes the shyness in yourself. Takes away the test of ibadah, the worshiping of Allah. There is a test in ibadah. This test is gone. You will feel even if you are doing ibadah, you are doing ruku', you are doing sujood, you are doing wudu, you are doing fasting, you don't feel anything. There is no test in it. So the sins makes the person doesn't feel anything. Everything like he doesn't know what he's doing. He's doing it, but he doesn't know. He doesn't feel anything, subhanAllah. 
Yes, Sister Fatima Ramushi said there is no peace of mind and success if we, uh, out of guidance from Islam, we uh, test. Yes. Barakallahu feeki. And uh, there is a fear always inside the heart because you know inside of you, you're committing a sin. So you are always fearing that what if I die with this sin? What if I die with this sin? Uh, what if people, they will find out I'm doing this? What if people, they will know that they will quote me or the police or something? What, you're always in fear. You, you're not in, in a secure uh, moments with you and yourself with committing the sin, which it makes you feel um, fulfilled with the desire. Yeah, and at the same time, the shaitan, he is making imagination in your mind that I am okay with it, I am satisfied, I'm happy. But at the same time, you are fearing. You have fear in, inside your heart to lose this thing or people to find out about it. So how to over these sins? If I intend to over these sins, anybody can commit a sin. Nobody doesn't have sins. Even the prophets, none of the messengers doesn't have sins. In the judgment day, all of us, subhanAllah, will fear Allah Azza wa Jal. Everybody will be scared on that day. Everyone, everyone. So from the bottom of our heart, we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rescue us, to get out from the sin. I know I have a problem. I have this sin, which I cannot get rid of it. So I need to go direct to Allah, ask the dua to him. Please take me out from this. And try to stop it, stop your hand, do anything. Try to distract yourself not to, to do the sin. There is many ways. That's why to be with people, it helps the person not to commit a sin. If you're alone, it is very easy to commit a sin. Being with the people sometimes, it helps the person to heal from the sin or to get him out from the sin. No. Yeah. So Sister uh, Fatima, she said, uh, do sincerely in our prayer to ask uh, Tawbah and guide us to stay away from uh, worldly sins. I mean, inshallah, we are yani, uh, doing the Tawbah is not an easy thing also. You know, when you go and uh, you know that the Tawbah feeling is the Tawbah. I always uh, given an, an example for the new couples, married couples, all right? So when, uh, when he finished the work, how he missed the wife to go and run to see her. So we shall have this kind of a feeling to Allah when we do tawbah. Run to him in like just, Ya Allah, forgive my sins, all of them. I need to do tawbah. I don't want to go back again to this sin. And it's not an easy thing because Allah Azza wa Jal, when you do tawbah, be sure he will test you many times. If you fail, he will test you again. If you fail, he will test you again. If you fail, he will test you again. If you have the real intention to change, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will correct that action inside of you. But sometimes it needs time. Not all the kind of sense that you can just change it immediately. Some of the big sense you can change immediately, but some of the small sense which you cannot change it immediately, that needs time. The common mistakes that we keep doing it every time. And... Uh, and we shall keep the promise inside of our heart. We shall not forget there is a promise between us and Allah. Same when Allah, he promised us, if you do this, I will give you this. If you do that, I will give you that. So same thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he keeps his promises to us. You shall keep your promises to Allah azza wa jal. And you shall get, feel guilty. Some people, they will say, okay, I will just stop it. But they don't feel anything. Okay, if that is the problem, you don't like it, okay, I will stop it. It's not for the sake of Allah. They don't have anything inside of them. So we shall feel guilty, this at them, yani we, the, the weight of it, because this is it shows our heart, it is life. There is something in our heart, it is life. So if it is not life, then what are we doing? Again, we are dead, because this dead, dead person can go and commit a sin again, because he's dead. So we need to make our heart, Heart life, yani purely to Allah Azza wa Jal. Increasing the istighfar. Wallahi, how many times we have sins we are committing a sin per day? Yani if the Sahaba days, everybody is making istighfar 100 times, 70 times, who are we? 
And even the devil, when uh, Iblis, when he's sending his devils to go and uh, ask, ask his devil, I mean, the, the, the shaitan, the lower him, because the Iblis is the higher. So he's asking the shayateen and all of them, go to Umar bin al-Khattab, go to Abu Bakr, let them commit a sin or something. So when they come back, they always come with an empty book. He's always shouting on them. How come you're coming with an empty sins? Nothing. They say, we cannot. We don't know how to conquer them. We don't know where to enter them to, to make them commit a sin. And on top of that, they're doing istighfar. And on top of that, they are from the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is going to reward them to enter to the Jannah, al mubashirina bil Jannah. So how, how we are, yani, how many things we do, how many things we talk rubbish in one day. How many things that we see it by our own eyes, we commit a sin, how many things? And how many things from the back and the last year and so on? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us in Arafah, in the last year and the coming year, ta'ala. But still, how do we know? If we're gonna live till tomorrow, maybe there is a sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive us anything that we did. So doing istighfar, is a very important, even istighfar, it opens the barakah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is opening the risk for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you feel everything is difficult, do istighfar. Do istighfar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for sure, he's going to open because it's like, there is things are covering your, your deeds or covering your risk. So by istighfar, subhanallah, it helps to remove those things. And keep the obligatory works, the salah, the main one. Some people, they are focusing in sunnah and they're leaving the obligatory. So what did we do? Because in the judgment day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will ask you for the obligatory first and then he will look at the alternative. For example, it's very funny sometimes what is happening in, uh, in Ramadan. So the person will not go to the masjid to pray the fard, the obligatory. He will make sure that he can reach to pray taraweeh. Which one is important to do jama'ah? Taraweeh is not important to do jama'ah. But he, 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 he's thinking that being there just in the mosque because I'm being there in the mosque and that's so I did my duties, it's not right. So you need to know what are the obligatory work that you need to do it. Choose good people around you. If you choose people who doesn't add value in your life, they will talk rubbish in, in, in every day. They will uh, mock her on people, uh, backbiting, talking about people. You will have sin on top of the sin, on top of the sin. Even your heart will start to darken without you knowing. Even your personality, your character will start to change. So even the good people which you used to be with them, they will come and visit you. They will feel there is something changed in you, but they will not gonna tell you. Or sometimes they will tell you, what's wrong with you? Did you change? What's happening with you? So they will try just to give you a small hint, like what's, what's wrong with you? So being with the people is very important. Whom you are um, getting along with. If you're getting along with a person to change the person to a better person, like you have like to give hidayah, this is something else. But if you're, I mean, this person is very close to you and wasting your time for nothing. They are not encouraging you in ibadah, not encouraging you in memorizing the Quran, not encouraging you in doing anything that is useful in your life. Leave this person. Try with this person to be a good person. So if you feel this person is wasting your time, don't waste your time. As I told you yesterday in the lecture, the shaitan, he will try, or the devil, he will try to make you um, fulfill your time with... Uh, something that you don't get even used for it. And for example, visiting a person in, in, inside your house, for example, is also part of something is good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can reward you. But if this kind of visiting is to start being like only jokes, uh, nonsense talks, it is mubah. They didn't talk about anything bad. They didn't talk about sins. They didn't talk, they didn't backbite. But talking, 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 neither you're not gaining any good deeds or neither you're not getting a sense. So the devil, he's focusing on these kind of corners. Choose the people who are around you. And even if you're gonna meet a person, such kind of a person, so time yourself. Know that within like two hours, one hour, I need to go. I shall not waste my time more than that. I did came, I greet the person, I need to go. That's it, finish. This is the reality that we live. We need to deal with the things. And be careful to sit with the people who has bad manners. Because subhanAllah, by no, even if you want it or you don't want it, you will grab the words behind them. If they have bad words, by time you without even 
noticing suddenly if something happened, you will start saying the bad words which they said. It's the same as the child. When the parents, they, they talk inside the house, they grab the words from the house. And when they go outside, if anything happened, they will react and say those bad words. And then suddenly you will say, who taught you how to speak like this? Who taught him? SubhanAllah. He's hearing what is around him. So this is something like psychological, something in the back of the mind, it is a stick. Revise yourself always. Revise yourself always. What did I do? Whom I harmed? Who I took people's rights? Did I do my ibadah properly? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted my deeds? How many times did I do istighfar today? Did I do my adhkar today? Did I pray two rak'ah? Did I say alhamdulillah? Did I do this? Try to revise yourself. What did you do in your life? And this is where it will make your senses in your heart awake, bi ta'ala, and it will keep you away from the sins if you're revising yourself every day. And this is for today. Barakallahu fiqh, wa jazakumullahu khairan. Subhanallah, bihamdik, ashadun la ilaha, tislafirik, ma tu bilik. If you have any question, please go ahead. Jazakumullahu khairan for attending today. So we'll end our session. Tomorrow we'll have uh, our session at the same time at 8.30, bin Allah ta'ala, and we're going to send you the topics. Barakallahu fikum wa jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.